that's the way it works. So with Plotinus, we get some beautiful statements. Right? <clears throat> I give you a couple pages of them. <clears throat> and among the things that are there is this description of the three classes of men. Right? So as you read through that, you can see that um, you know, he is well aware that there are other approaches to life, there are other people doing other things in life, it's just not satisfactory. It's only the person who really wants to go for God. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, for a person who has just written a book full of things about the one, to say that you really can't express it sounds a bit weird. Why is it that <laughs> if you can't really say what the one is or what it's all about, that he has said all of this stuff? Because we can use words to point beyond. We can say, if you have enjoyed anything in life, you want to continue to enjoy things. And the enjoyment that you had as a kid gets you into a sort of out-of-body experience. This is what the Greeks <laughs> called an ecstasis. Stasis is a standing, and X is out of. Do you have an experience of standing outside yourself and looking at yourself doing what you're doing? Then you are having an ecstasy. Now, in America, it's taboo to talk about this. America, you're never supposed to bring up that kind of enjoyment. And this is a little hangover from our Puritan past. Okay? We were started by people on the East Coast who had their own little agenda. And they were busy pushing it down any throat they encountered. Okay? And that meant they ended up fighting each other. There were all of these terrible things that happened. And that's what really is sort of still going on today. You find people will adopt an agenda, and then they will push it. And if they win, they continue to push it. If they lose, they go home and uh, gripe about it, and try to reorganize it, and try to get it done again. So we're still latter-day Puritans in this sense. And we do not admit, if we're typical Americans, that the purpose of life is to get beyond that the purpose of living is to live outside of all of these restrictions. Now, as a child, you had momentary ecstasy. Can you think of one? Can you think back to as a kid when you did something? And it was so transcendent that you had this experience, which could be described as standing outside yourself, watching yourself succeed, watching yourself do something. Nancy? When we made our first communion, we had so much preparation, so much teaching. We were so psyched to do this. And you're walking up there and you're at the altar, it's like you're not even there. See, it's the first time. How about yeah. bird? How about? Bird? Bird. Okay. Now, were you thinking about being born? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that could be, I just don't remember mine. <laughs> See, that kind of thing could happen. I also hear 
from mothers now and then, not from each and every mother, but giving birth was an ecstatic experience. There was a great deal of pain. But when the baby came forth, there was this kind of, gee, I'm watching myself give birth to this baby, and it's another tremendous joy. Not, yeah. I was uh, born, I think. Yeah, I was born. Yeah. <laughs> In Mora, New Mexico. Yeah. And when I was a baby, my experience was, If I was born in, uh, you know, about five or seven days after Christmas, December the 31st, 31st, I was under this Christmas tree, and they didn't have the flashing lights, like, how they, they had those little tiny candles, you know, very careful. And I could see myself under that Christmas tree looking up and seeing the lights, seeing the little lights, you know, the little candles. And I think I could even feel my feet kicking a little bit in the crib as a baby. But the bigger experience is my mother. That I could feel her, I could feel myself a baby in her arms, cradling the love of my mother. And those are, you know, an experience of a baby. Sure. That's pretty close to being born. <laughs> and it, it was probably an ecstasy for you. See? It's an expression of your spirituality. It's an expression of getting loose from the cave, as Plato considered it, the present where your soul is being punished. Now, when we're young, we have bunches of ecstasies. Probably you can think back that when, when you were a kid, you'd have maybe three or four ecstasies a day. One of the reasons you didn't like school is because it cut down on them. Right? There was all this other stuff you were supposed to do, and you weren't really supposed to get into ecstasies. They were not allowed. It was a punishable offense. Okay. But whether it was riding a bicycle, whether it was the first time that you were able to share a story with a friend, so that what you enjoyed about the story, the other person enjoyed about the story, there is this ecstasy where you get beyond. It's a spiritual experience, which is a foretaste of heaven. When you think about the ecstasy, then you're thinking about what Plotinus is saying about all of this delight. And you can imagine now, as you continue <clears throat> up toward God, the quality of your ecstasy improves. It's wonderful to finally be able to ride your bicycle around the block without falling down, right? And you're jumping up and down, you run in, you know, and you want to tell your parents about it, and you're having this great ecstasy. But it is not very great. It comes to an end, and you might have forgotten it until today when you're thinking back and looking for And sharing that little story you know, with your friend. Wow, that was so great. You were jumping up and down. You know, your friend was jumping up and down. Remember those things? Right? But the quality of it is kind of short. And it won't satisfy you today. Right? But if you think about the way in which you are spiritual, the way from these ecstasies, you have escaped the limitations of matter. And you start putting them all together, and you recognize, gee, I'm having an intellectual ecstasy right now by understanding that this is who I really am. All those people came along and said, no, 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 don't do that. They were the Puritan thought police who shouldn't have said that. And 
they have been trying to restrict my spiritual growth. And as I become more spiritual, I can have higher quality ecstatic experiences. I can pray, I can meditate, I can contemplate. These are all three different words for the same thing. Another word for it is being real. When I pray, when, like Nancy said, I go to make my first communion, and everything is fitting together so beautifully, I am so real at that moment because I am so spiritual. And then I fall back into what Plato called illusion. And I start shadow gossiping and I'm on about how to get ahead in life, how to make money, how to do all this stuff that doesn't really count. And the stuff that John was talking about. And see, as I become more spiritual, I get past those things. And I get into deeper and higher and more exalted uh, ecstasy. That's what keeps the great philosophers going, is these reality experiences. And instead of being limited <clears throat> to just this or that that was so excited, excited when we were kids, but they become less and less limited, more and more universal. And as they become more universal, we don't have any words for them. But you can begin to get to the point. You can see from these little ones, <coughs> you can launch off into the bigger ones. And as you have bigger, ecstatic experiences where your spirit gets out into the reality of spirituality. Then you are able to put up with a lot of little, little problems. You say, they don't matter. <clears throat> Somebody mentioned uh, just yesterday, <clears throat> paying bills. Right? Marilyn was talking about paying bills and insurance and all of that stuff. Well, you get beyond worrying Because you are so real, you are so spiritual, and you are having, maybe not every day, but regularly enough, you are having ecstatic experience. So, <clears throat> you could say, when I was little, you know, I had an experience here, and that was an ecstasy, and that was an ecstasy, and they all started going up a bit, and then I got to be a teenager, and wham, you know, I sort of collapsed. There were all sorts of depressions and things that, you know, go with being a teenager, but um, they surprised me. You know, it's the first time I was ever a teenager, and it's the first time I ever experienced that kind of depression. Right? So it sort of occupied the entire universe for me at the time. And then I kind of got out of it, you know, <clears throat> and I started having some pretty high highs that were way higher than anything I had as a younger person, too. And it was all that, you know, shifting back and forth. That's why they call it a temporary psychosis. But hopefully, as we become adults, we begin to get up into higher and higher. We've got our ups and downs, but not nearly so far down as that. And Eventually, <clears throat> what we're hoping for is that we can quit the up and down part and just get into an eternal up. What is psychosis? I mean, I know more or less, but I don't know the yeah. exact. Right. A psychosis. Is when you're in standstill? Well, no, it's a departure. Oh, departure. It's a departure from reality. Departure from the body. Yeah, I know psychotic means out of contact with the real. Hey. So psychosis would be a state. Yeah, a state you, you don't of being psychotic. A state of not realizing the reality. 